Hello everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. So happy you're here with us today. Today we're gonna to look at a really cool topic, one that often comes up in iOS interviews, and that is the difference between a stack and a heap. Knowing the difference between stacks and heaps isn't only a great interview question, it actually affects how you write iOS programs. So in this episode, we're gonna take a look at what the differences are between stacks, how they're different from heaps, and then finally see how they affect us when we're building and writing iOS programs. So come on in and we'll dive into this really interesting subject together. What some of you may or may not know is that when Swift compiles your program, it's actually using two different types of memory, one called stacks and one called heaps. Stacks is a very fast compile time area of memory. This is where ahead of time, Swift can take a look at your program, compile everything together, and really figure out what the call stack is or the order of operations when one function calls another. So things like structs, enums, and tuples, these are all stored in a stack, and this is a very efficient, very quick way to quickly access blocks of memory and equally quickly get things off. Now there's another type of memory called heaps, and this is where objects and more complex types of programs are stored. Here you're gonna get classes, closures, and this is capable of dynamically allocating memory at runtime and throwing in really complex object graphs and dynamically figuring out what's gonna happen based on the runtime of your program. So classes, closures, these types of things are stored in the heap, and basically those are the two different types of memory that we've got in Swift. Now the difference between the two and why it's important to know how stacks work when compared to heaps is basically how they pass data. Stacks pass data by value. Passing by value means when you access a struct, an enum, or a tuple, what you're actually getting is a copy of that value from the stack. Copying by value is different than actually copying by reference because in value, you're gonna get copies of these things, which means whatever changes you make to these things from a stack in the program are all local, meaning they don't have the side effect of rippling out and having other effects throughout your program. Compare that to heaps, which are passed by reference. And here, when you create a class and you pass it around your program in Swift, what you're really passing is a pointer or an actual reference to the actual class throughout your program. Meaning if I have a class here and I make a change to it here, that ripples out and affects all the other instances of that object throughout my program. So if I make a change here, I get that change immediately affected everywhere else out there. That's the main difference between a stack and a heap when it comes to memory. And while it appears subtle, this actually can have a big effect on how you write programs. Let's jump into the arcade now and look at a concrete example of where a stack versus a heap really matters. Okay, so what I have here is a very simple matching algorithm for a real program I was working on in real life where I wanted to match students with courses. I can simply define a series of students, define a series of courses, pass those into a matching algorithm, and when I type match, I like to make sure that the students get their courses based on their preference. So right now when I run this, it's gonna go in, match the students based on their preferences to the course, and if the course has enough capacity, the match will be made. Now the key thing to appreciate here is when I solve this, I solve it using classes. Meaning my student is a class, my course is a class, and when I pass those into Matcher, I'm passing in an array of classes. So when a match is made and I change the student or the course here, what I'm actually changing is the reference passed in because classes are passed on the heap. And this is the big thing to understand with heap. When you're working with classes and you're passing classes around, you get back a reference or a pointer to that class. What that means for you when you're writing programs is if you pass in a class to a function and you change the state of that class in that function, that change ripples out throughout your program. That's how I'm able to make an assertion on a student in my unit test and note the change that occurred in the function where I passed it in. So that's the first thing to understand. And if you're coming from traditional OO languages like C++ or Java, 
Pass by reference is typically how objects and classes get passed around. So you might already be familiar with this. This is how you'd expect things to work. Okay, so that's all well and good. That may not be such a big deal. But what if you're just getting into Swift and you've been reading a lot of documentation and you hear this thing, you should favor structs over classes when building applications in Swift. So naively, you might do what I did. You might take your class-based implementation and simply flip these things over to structs. Because after all, we want to be more Swift compliant. We want to write more Swift-like code. So I'll take my same algorithm. I'll convert those classes into structs. The matching algorithm is exactly the same. Only when I go to run my unit test here, for some reason, the exact same algorithm that worked with classes suddenly doesn't work with structs. Like, what's up with that? What? The algorithm's the same. I'm passing in the same objects. What's different about passing in a struct versus a class? And this is where the subtlety of heaps versus stacks comes in. Instead of passing everything with a class and getting a reference and seeing that change instantly happen, when we work with structs, remember, we're passing by value, which means when I pass a student into my matching algorithm, I'm not getting a reference to these original students out here. I'm getting a copy, meaning whatever changes I make to student in here in this matching algorithm, these are all local only to this function and this copy. I won't see those changes out here like I did when I was working with the class because I don't have a reference to it. I've got a copy. And that's the subtle nature of the difference between the stack and the heap. Structs get passed by copy because they're in the stack. Classes get passed by reference between there and the heap. And that's why you'll get different behaviors between structs and classes in your Swift programs. So you may be wondering, which is better? Jonathan, should I be building things with classes because that seems like it's easier to pass things around by reference? Or should I take this strange advice and favor structs? Well, it's not really a question of which is better. They both fill different roles. You see, in iOS right now, we're in this really interesting time where for the last 10 to 15 years, everything's built on a class-based system using UIKit. So when you're working with UI View Controller, UI Table View, Coco Touch, and all the things in UIKit, that's a class-based infrastructure, and that's why we still use classes heavily in iOS development and Swift today. There's lots of legacy there, there's lots of Objective-C, and passing by reference is typically how these things work. That's why when you change the state of a UI view and UI kit, you instantly see that change rippled everywhere else throughout your program. That's how UI kit works today. But going forward in the future, there's another style of programming that's gotten more popular, and that's called functional programming. And Swift really straddles these two worlds. You've got the object-oriented traditional pass-by-reference stuff over here, and you've got the more functional stateless style of programming over here. And that's where Swift is moving to in the future. If you've played with Swift UI, you'll note that every view in Swift UI is a struct. There's no reference passing in Swift UI, save for those few times where you truly want to track state. The use of classes are really minimized. That's why it's important for you to understand this distinction. In UI Kit, where we're working with classes, that state gets passed around by reference. But in Swift UI, all those structs are created every time a new view is created. It's much more stateless, it's much more stack based development, and there's just that important subtle difference that now you understand so you can safely walk and straddle these two worlds. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If so, and you'd like to learn more about Swift and iOS programming and how to become a real professional, do check the show notes. I have a course dedicated to this and all sorts of other fascinating topics. In the course, you learn how to build real life apps, how to be a professional iOS programmer, and I give you all the tools and skill sets you're gonna to need to go out there and land your very first iOS job. So thanks for coming, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you in the next episode. Okay, take care. Happy New Year. Bye-bye.